and Wolverines fire Jim Harbaugh. Next on the It's Just Different podcast. episode of the It's Just Different podcast, and it wasn't a great Saturday this past weekend, another loss for the Michigan Wolverines, 38-21 to the Indiana Hoosiers, these are not your granddaddy's Indiana Hoosiers, Uh, I thought it was going to be a good game, it turned out to be a good game, and uh, it didn't go in our favor, I've seen some good things, I've seen some horrible things. And I've seen some things that um, are starting to be a trend, not a good way either, and not, a, and not in a good way. So here's what, here's where I stand with this team. As you've seen, if you've seen my previous video, I picked them to go undefeated. That's not going to happen, obviously. Two losses, one and two. Um... I did not see um, the defensive line not being as dominant as I uh, thought they would be. Uh, we heard the news yesterday, a couple of days ago, Aiden Hutchinson's out for the year, fracturing his foot, um, and that's not good. Um, Jalen Mayfield has an injury. He may not wear the Michigan Wolverine uniform again. Um, so that's a worry. So, you know, we're dealing with, this is a lot of different circumstances with this year, man, but, you know, um, they have a lot of young guys and they got to learn fast. You know what I mean? It's no complaints. You got to get out there and learn fast, man. You got to do your job. The most concerning thing for me when I see this football team, uh, I'll say 1A, 1B. 1A would be the cornerbacks, the defensive backs. They cannot seem to play the ball when it's in the air. Now, right before I came on here to record this podcast, I read uh, Mike Zordich, the cornerbacks uh, coach, comments on the uh, Inside the Huddle podcast with John Jansen. Uh, he, uh, oh, I forgot the name of the podcast, I'm sorry. But he um he basically said he knows what the fix he knows what the problem is. Daxon Hill said it as well earlier in the week. It's a disconnect with what happens in practice and what happens on the field it, on Saturdays at least. Um, you know he pointed out some plays where they got beat off the line, but they ended up getting back in a great position while the ball was coming and they just didn't play the ball good and. He's working on that. Mike Zordich is a great corners back, uh, defensive back coach. So uh, I'm not um, calling for him to be dismissed or anything like that. Um, but you know, he has to hurry up and get it fixed fast because you know um, it was a team waiting at the end of the year. That's just, that's just going to they're just they're just going to drop back and throw it as, as deep as they can. And and you know we all know. How it's worked out the two previous years, um, you know. Another thing is the defensive line jumping the, on claps. You know, uh, um, the quarterbacks the last two weeks, Michigan State and and uh, Indiana, they would they would clap the ball. They would clap before they got the snap, and for some reason. The Michigan defenders are just jumping off sides. Not even, first of all, I have never played football, like, on a recreational level. You know what I'm saying? On the field with pads and everything like that. And I've never played the defensive line. But even I know, you don't look at the quarterback, you look at the ball. And for some reason... I've never seen this before, by the way. I've never seen this on Michigan's defensive line. This is, like, surprising. For some reason, the quarterback, it gets, like, five seconds. The quarterback, he throws his leg, claps, and they just jump before the ball. Get, and it's like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> you're just giving up free plays, and they're just throwing the ball down the field saying, hey, 
whatever happens, happens. They've been getting big plays all year because of it. So I wouldn't be surprised if every team going forward decides that, hey, clap before you snap, before we get this, uh, before we hike the ball because it's been working. And it's embarrassing if you ask me. That is on coaching. That is on coaching and it's also on mental <clears throat> mental breakdowns. Um, Don Brown. I've been off and on on him. I said it this weekend and I'm going to continue. I, I think Don Brown and I hate doing this, man. I hate calling for people's jobs. I think Don Brown needs to be going. And it has every, it has nothing to do with the fact that he can't coach. It has everything to do with the fact that they may need a new voice. And that's saying a lot because if you call for a coach firing as, as good as Don Brown has been at the University of Michigan, that means there are going to be a lot of guys that's going to be looking around like, I didn't come here to, to not be coached by him. Or even in the 22 class when you have two, the number one, number two corners in the class who are looking for a reason to come to Michigan. And either giving them a reason, like, I don't, like, I would look at it as a reason to come if I know the defensive backs are bad and I might get right on the field. But some guys look at it and say, are they being taught well or, or what? Or they not know how to play defense? Because that would scare some recruits away. So, you know, do I think he should be gone after the one and two start after the last two games against Ohio State? <clears throat> yeah. Um, do I expect him to be dismissed? Even after this, this season? No. I don't expect him to be uh, dismissed at all. Um. Which leads me to Jim Harbaugh. I argued all weekend with friends on social media, in person, <clears throat> through text messages. Jim Harbaugh is not going anywhere. You know, I mean, Michigan fans may have the most knee-jerk reactions of any fan base. And... Let me, let me first say this. Is it bad right now? Oh, yeah. It, it, it is not good. Not at all. Can it be turned around? Yes, it can. Why? Because Jim Harbaugh did not overnight forget how to coach. He has all the evidence in the world on his resume that he knows how to coach. This guy is not a bad football coach. It's something, something's missing. I can't put a finger on it, but something is missing. Um, the fire that he had when he on the sidelines when he first got to Michigan, that is not there. That is non-existent. I know why he stopped doing it. it had everything to do with that 2016 game. We all know what that was, and it had a lot to do with uh, constantly being told to to you know. Um, Pretty much calmed down by refs because he was he was getting his team in bad spots. He was he was not it was not a good thing for refs to go back and forth with him every game or when he felt like something was bad. So I understand why he calmed down. Why he said, "All right, look, I'm going to try to keep myself intact, my emotions intact." And that I you know it just seems like he just completely stopped being a fiery guy on the sideline at least. I don't know what he says in the locker room. I don't know what he says at practice, but. Um, I can tell you this, this team has not quit on Jim Harbaugh. And the biggest evidence I have of that is the second half at Indiana the, when they came out of the locker room and they were, uh, Joe Milton was letting it rip down the field. And Roddy Bell and Roman Wilson, these guys, like these guys were Cornelius Johnson. These guys were into the game. They were really trying to get a comeback going. Ronnie Bell was doing everything in his power to get this team to go. And a team that's quit on their coach would not do that. They would not be out there fighting like that. 
just ask the Detroit Lions this past weekend when they lost to my Vikings. <clears throat> it looked like they were just out there standing around on defense. Not doing much. They didn't have much on offense, but they <clears throat> basic offensive plays, no no really aggressiveness to it. It was kind of like whatever. That's quitting on your coach. That's like, all right, we don't want to be here no more. <clears throat> We're making business decisions out there on the football field. That's a difference in what I've seen in Michigan. Um, and they were making the comeback until Milton had a, a bad decision when he threw the ball to the defensive back that he didn't see. He clearly didn't see the defensive back there, threw it right to him. And, 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 and Michigan was mounting the comeback. They were coming. They were coming. And, uh, you know, a poor decision led to a, a interception. <clears throat> but when we, have this discuss, when we have this discussion about firing Jim Harbaugh, Here's my biggest issue with everybody who wants to fire Jim Hall or fire every coach that's ever had a bad year in sports. Here's my deal. After Lloyd Carr, that we all wanted Lloyd Carr, and we just knew it was it was over with. We knew it what it, what he was doing wasn't working. We got Rich Rodriguez, right? Rich Rodriguez come <clears throat> Rich Rodriguez comes in. Tries to something new. Spreads tries to spread offense. I'm gonna run my I'm gonna run my offense that I got a lot of praise for at West Virginia <clears throat> with Pat White and Slayton. And Michigan didn't want it in the Big Ten. They didn't want to spread offense. You know, we want to ground and pound. The fans call for it. Get him out of here. Get him out. Was, was he doing great? <clears throat> no, he wasn't doing great. I don't believe so. Sorry, my throat. I don't believe so, um, but and I was a part of that. I wanted him going too. So they fired him. They got Brady Hulk. Brady Hulk somehow beat Ohio State. How I don't know. No, I, I don't know. Um, but I do know he he beat Luke Fickle. So that says what that was. He didn't he didn't beat a great coach. He didn't beat a great team. Um, but he did recruit pretty decently. He did get Jabril Peppers here, right? So. He wasn't doing great. We wanted him fired. Everybody wanted Brady Hope fired. So we, they fired him. And now we get the savior, Jim Harbaugh. <clears throat> Five and a half years and one and two start. Everybody wants him gone. It's all over the media. It's, he's done. He's sending him to the NFL. It's over. It's over. There's nothing that I've seen, heard, read anything that indicates that Jim Harbaugh wants to leave the University of Michigan. So all, all the NFL aficionados that like to call the Jets are going to, you know, all, no, he's he's not going back. That's it. He said, like, watch, this, watch the, the um, kind of awkward press conference he had the other day when he was asked about him staying at Michigan. He basically said, he basically said his actions are going to speak louder than his words because what he says doesn't really... We all know what coaches say don't mean a damn thing in college sports, which I believe is the right approach for him to say, look, why would I tell you something that you already know you're not going to agree with anyway? Regardless of what comes out of my mouth, you're not going to believe what I say. So just watch my actions. The recruits watch my actions. These are the ones I should be worried about. I should not be caring about whether or not the damn media thinks I want to leave or wants me out. I could care less about that. About my contract being the only one in, in college football top program that has one year left. Yeah, but these guys all had extensions before the pandemic hit. Jim Harbaugh, if you're you 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 have to be an idiot to believe that he was not about to get an extension before the pandemic. This <clears throat> this school is going to lose a lot of money this year. A lot. So it, it just does not look good to sit in a pandemic and go, well, we're going to give our coach another huge contract. The optics of it does not seem well. You know, the AD has said, basically said behind scenes, he's not having that discussion about removing Jim Harbaugh. It's not, it's not even a thought. So, for everybody keep saying this, understand something, man. I'm a, look, if you fire Jim Harbaugh, you're going to be bad for 10 years. 
This I'm not exaggerating. You know why you're going to be bad for 10 years? Because you're not getting Urban Meyer. It's an Ohio State guy. You're not getting Urban Meyer. Luke Fickle, who the hell wants Luke Fickle? The guy, the only guy that we've beaten that coached Ohio State in the last 15 years. Why the hell we want him to be our coach? I heard Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops. Yeah, he has a national title. But uh, ever since that title, did he not underachieve at Oklahoma? Well, all the great teams they had. Give me a break, man. Who else? You know, I've been asking for two weeks now. Give me someone who's legit. Not a pipe dream coach. A legit guy. A legit guy who can go recruit. Who can also coach on an elite level that will come to the University of Michigan. And do what he, Howard Ball has done when he started and elevate it. As soon as they get here. Hit the recruiting trails. Never have a letdown in recruiting rankings. You, you, you find me that guy. And I'll possibly think about uh, saying Jim Harbaugh needs to be fired. The problem with that is there's no guy out there. That guy is not out there. Dabble Swinney is not leaving Clemson. Nick Saban is for sure is not leaving Alabama. Uh, when you want to go down the list, Ryan Day, that's Ohio State. They're never going to do that. We all know that. Uh, I mean, goodness, uh, what, what's the guy's name uh, at Ole Miss? Lane, uh, Lane Kiffin. Nobody wants Lane. Lane Kiffin is walking controversy. I mean, walking controversy. Um, and it looks, you know, and, and everything that Ward Manuel, the AD, has done shows you, even with the Jawan Howard hiring basketball, shows you that he's he's not, he's going to look for a Michigan guy. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's going to be a Michigan man if he was to dismiss Jim Harbaugh, if Jim Harbaugh walked away. Um, and I don't see a Michigan guy, maybe I'm just not, Looking at it great, I don't see a Michigan guy that's going to come and do what he and do better than what he's been doing, especially recruiting wise. Um, I just don't see it, man. So I, you know, a part of me if I get annoyed at people saying it so much, because it's like I'm a realist, man. I am a realist. I root for the Minnesota Vikings. I root for the Miami Heat. I root for the Michigan Wolverines. I root for North Carolina basketball. You know, these are teams that I've always rooted for. These teams have had some bad years, man. Bad years. I've never had a dynasty going. The Miami Heat was close to a dynasty. Even then, they won two titles out of uh, four years. You know what I mean? Like, Michigan has always been nine, ten wins every year. Nine, ten wins every year. But if you talk to our fan base, they would think we've won 10 titles in the last 30 years. And it's not even true. Like, it's not even, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, I didn't expect us. This was the first year I picked us to go undefeated. Other than, let me take that back. Let me take that back. Uh, yeah, this was the first year I picked us to go undefeated. This was the first year I thought with a spread offense, Paul Feinbaum, talking about Jim Harbaugh doesn't, whatever, I'm not going to get this guy any clout. But a spread offense for his second year in a row, his second season in running the spread, with fast guys, speed and space, I thought the quarterback who can actually deliver, who's a big guy, who can see over the line and deliver passes that shape pass and just couldn't complete because he was shorter than Joe Milton. He couldn't, he couldn't see the field like Joe Milton could. I thought that this was going to be good. I did not see the running game being bad in the, over these last two weeks. I thought, I knew the cornerback. I said it in the preview of the season. I knew the cornerbacks were going to be the weakest part of the team. And I I am not impressed. But I do think they can fix it. I just don't. It's not about the Don Brown running his, 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 his man scheme or playing zone. Let me tell you something. For everybody who wants him to play zone, stop saying that. Because it's obvious, it's obvious what happens when they play. They don't practice zone. So when you see a zone defense and guys are just running by themselves with no guy in sight, 
that lets you know they don't they don't practice zone. He doesn't he does not want to run zone at all. Indiana was having 15 yards between them and the closest defender when they ran zone. Right? Don't run zone. You can be pretty good on defense on the cornerbacks if they played the ball well and if you got more pressure from the D-line. That's it. You got to get more pressure with the four. You get pressure with four and the secondary will be fine. Is it a simple fix? No. It's not a simple fix. But can it be done in Michigan? Oh, hell yeah, it can be done in Michigan. Because he's done it every year he's been there. He's done it every year he's been there. You know, it's 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 crazy to me. I'm 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 gonna question people's fandom for a minute because it's 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 crazy to me how you you watch a game, you get pissed, you get frustrated, you say what you want to say on social media or whatever at the bar, you go crazy for a minute, and then the very next Saturday you're watching the game again. I get it, man. As a fan, it sucks when, when your team's bad. Just ask a Detroit Lions fan. I have a lot of friends who root for the Lions, and I do not know for the life of me why they continue to do it. So I get if you're a Detroit Lions fan and then you're a Michigan fan on top of that, the frustration has to be immense. Like, God, can somebody please be good for me? But that's your fault for, for rooting for the Lions. But, hey, whatever. I look at things on a positive note. I am, on my Facebook page, on my timeline, there's nobody who talks about Michigan recruiting or Michigan sports more than I do. It's not even close. It's not even close. So, if someone should be frustrated and down and out on this team, oh my God, I, I think it should be me. Because I, I watch, I follow these kids' recruitments. I watch their highlights a lot. And I'm always on the Twitter timeline trying to figure out little hints. I'm always doing this, man. I'm always giving people information before it happens. Just looking at what I say and sometimes reading blogs and going to message boards and, and, and delivering it to the people. I'm going to stop doing that, by the way, because <clears throat> why should I do it for ungrateful people? You know what I'm saying? Um, and even then, I'm sitting here, I'm like, yo, Michigan has more talent than a lot of these teams other than Ohio State. And they're pretty close to Ohio State. So I, I don't know why they're out there doing stuff that they keep saying they don't do in practice. Is it coaching? Some areas, yeah. But it's also a mental thing. I played sports, guys. I played basketball my entire life. I played sports. I know for a fact there's players who go practice and practice their ass off and do everything right. And as soon as you put them in a game, palms are sweaty, butts get tight, they don't act like the same player. It happens. So I'm not going to sit here and say that's all coaching. That's Some guys just don't got it. Some guys just don't have it. And there's a guy on the sideline, Andre Selden Jr., who I know can play defensive back. And I, you know, just reading something he tweeted a couple hours ago lets me know. Also, what Jim Harbaugh said earlier this week saying that, Guys who don't who haven't been playing are going to get a lot of time now. At least we know he's going to play. That they're going to find some guys that actually want to play and actually going to give it their effort. You you need some dudes, man. Don Brown says all the time, dudes. You just need dudes. You need guys out there. Like you don't got to be the most talented. You don't got to be the best technician, but you need dudes who's going to get out there and make a play. Make a play. And right now, the guys that they're out there throwing out there, I'm not going to call out names, but they're just not making the plays, man. The ball is, like Charles Wilson pointed out <laughs> in week two, the ball is coming to you when you're there, turn around and knock it down or catch it. It's right, it's coming to you every time. It's frustrating to watch, man. It's frustrating to watch when you see it. Like, oh, that's an interception or that's a, or that's a, uh, a knockdown and it's a touchdown. And he like, and I'm looking like, how, like, how, how did he not knock that down? Yes, it's frustrating, man. Yes, it gets you pissed off. But I'm all in, man. 
I've always been all in. I'm going to be all in. There, This is a huge... I hope this game happens, man, because this is a huge game this weekend against Wisconsin, top 15 team coming off of COVID. I have no idea who the quarterback's going to be. I have no idea what kind of team they're going to field. But if they do field everybody except the quarterback, I think their defense is really good. This is going to be a good test for Michigan, really good test for Michigan. And also – a big recruiting day that day. They have their 21 class commits. Most of, I don't say most, but a lot of those guys are going to be in Ann Arbor. Of course, they can't go be with the coaches or the team. Uh, they're going to be there together watching the game. And also, targets for the 22 class are going to be there. And I'm talking specifically about Will Johnson and Domani Jackson. The number one, number two defensive backs in the class. Two five stars who are looking for a reason to come to the University of Michigan. If <clears throat> A couple weeks ago, they had everybody, including myself, nervous about the prospects of going to Ohio State with their um, cryptic tweets, their tagging Ohio State football and their profiles. And, um, the Texas commit decommitted and now he's supposed to be going to Ohio State and it it, it it just seemed like oh my god are you kidding me you, you gotta be kidding me but I look at it like if these guys are coming to visit after your one and two lets me know that they want to come here show me something that makes me want to be here they Demonte Jackson has said Michigan has always been his dream school Will Johnson is a legacy kid. So it's like, show us something, man. Like, show us something. That's another reason why I'm like, yo, Jim Harbaugh is not going nowhere. If he goes, I'm not going to even speak on that anymore. If he goes, be careful what you wish for. That would be the last thing i say about that. Um, look out for a podcast tomorrow. I'm supposed to have a guest I don't know if I'm going to do a video or I'm going to do an audio version. Um, we'll see. I still got um, to figure that out. Uh, and I'll figure that out probably later on today or earlier early tomorrow. But um, if I do uh, have a uh, audio version of my podcast, it's on Spotify. It's just different. I have over 30 episodes on there. So... Feel free to go look at that or look at that. My actual intro song to my podcast is on there. I just can't seem to find a file to put it on here. I can't seem to find the file. So I'll figure that out sometime and put it on here. But um, yeah, man, check out my podcast on Spotify. Um, maybe I might do a Facebook Live on my podcast page on Facebook. It's just different. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm most likely. I more than likely may do an audio version or a Facebook Live version. Um, those are probably the two, two best options to, to get this done. But, um, yeah, man, that's it, man. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Peace.